folks, Jimmy Ray Purser here for NSX. And one of the things that uh, folks do when they hear about the NSX solution, right, when we get up there and, and we whiteboard it for them, we explain everything out to them, the first thing they typically want to know, besides how much does it cost, is what do you need from me? How do you make this work, right? Because typically we're used to this whole uh, rack and stack uh, type of methodology of upgrading the network uh, and things of that nature, right? So we're typically looking at, you know, what shipping dock uh, does, does this type of equipment need? And it tends to be pretty su surprised. Folks tend to freak out a little bit when I say, well, really all we need is a VLAN from you on your physical network to act as a transport so that we can actually forward out uh, some of our frames that actually use, or, or our packet streams that actually use VXLAN. Now, VXLAN is a very interesting technology, and it's really uh, a, one of the, 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 the overlay technologies. There's a few other ones out there as well, uh, but VXLAN is kind of the most popular um, out there. It was developed by everybody, right? It's a consortium. Uh, so you had us and Cisco and Arista and a whole bunch of uh, people tie in uh, and build this overlay type of technology. But then a lot of folks that are just starting to get used to it kind of want to know, well, uh, what is it? I mean, is it proprietary? Is it kind of, you know, is it, is it giving me the golden handcuffs here? Uh, VXLAN is really pretty darn simple. When, when we take it out here, what you're looking at here is you're looking at basically uh, layer two encapsulated by layer three. So it, it's basically you take your layer two frame here, and then I'm going to wrap it uh, in a layer three uh, type of frame so I can actually transport it across. Now, this gives me a few pretty cool, cool things when I set this up. Because when you allow this to happen, that means that you're able to keep the integrity uh, of this frame exactly what it is, to the point that I can actually even hash out exactly what my layer two to four information is here as, as well, so that my load balancers still work, right? That's the one thing that, you know, that, that a lot of the server folks always want to know really quickly, is that, well, if you're putting boxcars on the end of this, well, then what does that do for my load balancers? Because now they're blind. No, man, this is hashed. Um, so you can actually make sure that you still keep your load balancing uh, to work like it's supposed to. But the really cool piece uh, of this is, is how I can actually transport this across from site to site. And I use this actually to work on my physical network. And it's going to work a little bit like this. Um, so if I have, and I'll start at, at, the, at the routing layer here itself. So let's just say I've got my DLR here, right? I've, I've got my DLR. And my DLR sees that um, I've got a frame that's coming in. Well, you know, I probably should start back at the, <laughs> at the hypervisor since that's where all the work happens, right? Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll, say, we'll, we'll say here at, at, at the hypervisor, uh, my, my frame is coming to a machine and it says, hey, you know what? This frame needs to go over to another hypervisor. So my hypervisor goes in and it starts building out my VXLAN frames. It'll forward that information up to the DLR, which will then in turn say that, oh, you need to go to the ESG. Now, the ESG is what my on-ramp, off-ramp is to my physical side of the network. So it's basically going to take that VXLAN frame or packet, and it's going to send that across, uh, to, all, across my physical network to the other side, where it can then be at my other hypervisor, which we'll just go ahead and put down here. Again, that'll go through ESG, DLR, that kind of thing on the other end. But just to make the drawing a little, little easier, let me go ahead and bring it over here. Once it hits that other hypervisor here, then it will go ahead and change this out just one little bit. It'll take what I have encapsulated here in the center. There's my L2 frame. It'll, it'll pop these off so that now my L2 frame will pass exactly where it was supposed to be, keeping its same VLAN and integrity. So what it looks like, logically speaking, is that you've got a VLAN that looks like this. It'll stretch across multiple data centers uh, inside of your network because you're able to maintain that integrity uh, inside of here. Now, there's a little more to it than, than, than that. Obviously, with anything, there's a little more complexity to it. Um, but here's some really cool things uh, that, that VXLAN will do uh, that, that really kind of help boost what we're doing in the network. Because, see, in the, st in the standard Layer 2 side, we only had about 4,095 VLANs that we can use, right? Zero to 4,095. A couple of reserved, that kind of stuff. But again, you kind of get the idea you only had 4,095 in here. Well, 
when we put VXLAN on, then that gives us the ability to actually build this header out and make it 24-bit. 24-bit's a pretty cool number, because if I have a 24-bit header, then guess what? That gives me 16 million uh, type of, of uh, what we call vinnies um, that I can actually uh, set up and map to. So that means that I can map 16 million instances across all these VLANs and set that out. I can really separate and really start to do some really amazing micro-segmentation things uh, with VXLAN that I didn't have the ability for or try to build that. Could you imagine building an access control list with something like that? That would have been enormous, right? Well, VXLAN and the way we're mapping that stuff out gives you that ability to have a lot more dynamic and build some stuff out. So that's pretty darn cool. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. That's what VXLAN is used for. It's our transport to our physical side, right? It maintains that integrity, and that is what we're really using it for. So when we come in and we say, hey, all we really need is you set up a transport VLAN force and stuff for NSX. You know, um, ESX has its own little requirements too as well, right? That doesn't negate those. What we're saying is, is that we just need you to build this transport VLAN force, and you need to make sure that the MTU is set to a minimum of 1600. Now, when you look at it, that, that kind of makes sense, right? Because I've got my layer 2 frame here. My layer 2 frame with a VLAN tag is 1522. That's how big a standard layer 2 frame is if I have the tag in there. Without the tag, it's 1518. So once I start adding my box cars on here, I add my layer 3 stuff in, well, that just makes that a little bit bigger, and that takes us down to 1600. Now, again, that's just a nice round number that we like to use. If you can bump it up to even higher, that, that's great. So uh, we'll give you a thumbs up here, woohoo! Um, because the, the bigger the MTU, the better, right? We can carry a little bit more information across, get a lot better performance. But that's really what VXLAN does. Now, um, it, it, it's great. I mean, there's a lot of really cool ways uh, that this works to actually, inside of NSX, that we build this up to actually control uh, how we're doing ARP suppression, um, how we're doing this uh, with, with unicast instead of multicast. Again, you can do multicast, unicast. Uh, a hybrid version of a little bit of both. You've got a lot of configuration options inside of the solution, uh, but the point of the matter is here, it's a very lightweight transport that allows you to get your information back and forth across your physical side in the fastest, most efficient way possible.